In this video, we are going to simulate the PLC program of a water pumping system we had written in the previous part of this series. We have provided the link to that video in the description if you intend to watch it. I've already opened the TIA portal and the water pumping system project and entered the main OB environment. I will start by running the PLC sim using the start simulation icon here. As you see, after some time, the PLC and the load preview window open. In this window, we see an action as consistent download. If we have used any functions, function blocks or data blocks in our software, then with consistent download, we could download them automatically without any issues. I click Load to download both the software and hardware to the PLC. In the next window, we see that the download has been completed without any errors. Besides, it asks that if we want to run the CPU or not. I choose the Start Module option and click Finish. As you see, this LED blinks and the CPU goes into the run mode. You could also click the run button on the CPU. Anyway, there are some other methods for downloading the hardware and the software to the PLC. We can use the download to device icon or we can use the online menu options. By these methods, all the software and hardware information will be downloaded to the device. But a more common method for downloading the software or hardware to the PLC specifically when the process is running, is that to simply choose the PLC and right-click on that. In the Download to Device menu, there are four options. If you have made some changes to the software and you only want to apply those changes, you should choose Software, Only Changes. In this way, you will let the CPU to stay in the run mode. This is especially useful when the process is running and we don't want to interrupt the process by stopping the CPU. The other options will stop the CPU, by the way. Now everything is ready for the simulation. If I click the monitoring button, you see that the black lines will convert to green and blue lines that show the live or real-time condition of the level switches and the electric motor. Where you see the green lines, it means that the condition is true. And where there is a blue line, the condition is false. Same as the tank high-level switch that does not sense any water and therefore this condition is false. To force the condition of the switches to our desired simulation condition, I have to create a table and I'm going to do that via the Switch to Project view on the PLC Sim window. In the opening window, I create a new project and name it as Water Pumping System. After some processing, our project has been created. What I need is on the project tree and under the Sim Tables folder. I expand it and open the Sim Table 1 by double clicking on it. I click on the Load Project Tags icon and it automatically loads all the project tags. We need the Beats column to modify the level switch's inputs to true or false. I float this table as I want to use it for the rest of the simulation so that you can see both the ladder logic and the same table at the same time. Let's start with this condition. The pool is full of water and therefore the pool low level switch is active and sending a 24 volt or a true signal to the PLC. The tank is empty and both the tank low level switch and high level switch are inactive and therefore the pump is working to increase the level of the water within the tank. Very soon, the tank low-level switch becomes active as it senses the water. As a side note, you see that the flip-flop keeps the set command and the pump is still running despite the set connection is inactive. And this is how flip-flop works. As soon as the level of the water reaches the high-level switch and activates that, the reset input of the flip-flop becomes activated and therefore the pump stops working. Now the water level will settle down due to the consumption through the outlet. 
and again the high level switch becomes inactive after some time. When the water reaches below the low level switch of the tank, this switch also becomes inactive and therefore the pump begins working and the water level starts to rise again. This scenario will be continued unless the water level in the pool decreases and the low level switch of the pool becomes inactive as a result. In this situation, the pump stops working instantly, even if the set input of the flip-flop is active. This is due to the priority of the reset input in the SR flip-flop, as we have talked about it in the previous video. And here is why we chose the SR flip-flop instead of RS flip-flop. Ok, that was all the possible conditions with this simple process. We hope you've learned something new from this video. I recommend you watch the next video since we will start programming and automating a new process with PLC. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and colleagues. You can ask us your questions in the comments and don't forget to suggest the subjects you want us to create. You can watch these great videos as well.